spam. It's more than just mysterious meat. While some joke it stands for something posing as meat, Hormel keeps the real name's origin a secret, known only to a select few. Beyond its enigmatic nature, Spam's rich history stretches from World War II soldiers to being embraced by global cuisines. It's not just a can of meat, it's a cultural icon. Dive in as we look at the secret process behind this classic American icon. When you look at Spam, it defies categorization, a curious blend of the unusual and the savory. But it has a legacy. As Eater highlights, its conception dates back to 1929 when Jay Hormel envisioned the next big thing for the brand. Upon noticing large blocks of canned meat in delis, he was inspired to miniaturize it. Enter Julia Zilgit, a Hormel genius who didn't just streamline the can size, but also refined the meat packing process. Jay Hormel's foresight didn't end there. To stand out, he chose only pork shoulder for spam, ensuring quality while utilizing a part of the pig often overlooked. Born in the heartland of Minnesota by Hormel Foods in 1937, Spam emerged during a pivotal era in food preservation. The shadows of World War I and the Great Depression underscored the necessity for reliable, cost-effective, and shelf-stable sources of protein. The rise of industrialized practices like refrigeration and conveyor lines led to meat packing hubs in cities like Kansas City and Chicago. Such innovations paved the way for large-scale meat and other preservation methods. Interestingly, the pork shoulder, a high-quality meat cut, was relatively inexpensive back then. Recognizing an opportunity, Hormel embarked on producing Spam, aiming to offer households a versatile, premium, yet budget-friendly protein staple. However, it was World War II that thrust Spam into global limelight. A staggering 100 million pounds of this canned marvel was dispatched globally to feed the troops. Its introduction in various regions led to an organic integration of Spam into their culinary traditions. Countries like the Philippines, Thailand, South Korea, and notably Hawaii warmly embraced Spam, making it a part of their gastronomic identity. For those intrigued by this meat's journey, the Spam Museum in Austin, Minnesota serves as a treasure trove. And for the ultimate Spam enthusiast, a myriad of flavors awaits exploration, from the zest of teriyaki and jalapeno to the comforting notes of hickory smoke. Spam for many years had two homes, one in Fremont, Nebraska, and another in Austin, Minnesota. However, the Star Tribune indicates a shift. In 2018, Hormel waved goodbye to their Nebraska plant, handing the reins to Holstone Farms LLC, a collective of hog farmers. Although they continued supplying Hormel for three years post-sale, the long-term relationship remained uncertain. For spam aficionados worldwide, interestingly, the delicacy is produced in South Korea, the Philippines, and Denmark. Although often dubbed mystery meat, Spam's simplicity is surprisingly refreshing. Comprising six straightforward ingredients, pork with ham, salt, water, potato starch, genuine sugar, and sodium nitrate, it's far from the synthetic concoction many might suspect. Yet, with its fat and sodium content, moderation is key. Enjoying Spam occasionally? Great! Making it a daily dish? Perhaps think twice. You're likely no stranger to salt and sugar, but what about the lesser known ingredients? Take sodium nitrite, often maligned in the media as potentially harmful. The World Cancer Research Fund suggests the risk isn't the compound itself, but rather the way it's cooked with other ingredients. Nitrites, when combined with high amino acid foods and then cooked, form nitrosamines, which are linked to cancer. However, their inclusion in Spam is crucial. Sodium nitrites combat bacteria that could potentially cause food poisoning. Plus, they lend Spam its signature pink hue due to a chemical reaction with meat proteins. And the potato starch? This ingredient ensures that the prolonged cooking of Spam doesn't render it too dry. It retains moisture and binds the product together. Intriguingly, it was only added to the Spam recipe in 2009, primarily to eliminate the unsightly gelatin layer. Lastly, pork with ham? This straightforward description represents the blend of pork shoulder with ham, the latter being the cured leg of the pig. 
Spam undergoes its transformation from recognizable pork cuts to its iconic texture during a meticulous process. Despite its scale, a mere 13 workers orchestrate this highly automated process. The journey begins with pieces of pig, which machinery meticulously separates from the bone, while experts trim the ham by hand. Next, 8,000 pound meaty mounds are ground, flash cooled, and mixed with other ingredients in hermetically sealed mixers. The mixture is then channeled onto a conveyor belt, filling can after can, which are then sealed. The next stop for these cans is a monumental cooker, scaling six stories and accommodating a staggering 66,000 spam-filled cans. Inside, the cans undergo intense heat, eradicating all bacteria before being cleaned, cooled, and labeled. The final products are then packed and dispatched to satiate spam aficionados across the nation. Internationally, Hormel entrusts the spam legacy to licensed manufacturers, ensuring the brand's global reach. Is spam on your health menu? Probably not. While tantalizing to many taste buds, spam isn't a health champion. A 12-ounce can has six portions, with each serving packing 16 grams of fat, of which 6 grams are saturated. The sodium content alone meets 33% of your daily intake. And though reduced sodium and light versions offer fewer unhealthy elements, spam-centric diets aren't nutritionist approved. Concerningly, some studies suggest potential links between processed meats like spam and cancer risks. A University of Hawaii study found that heavy processed meat consumers had a 67% heightened risk of pancreatic cancer. However, no associations were found with poultry and dairy, pointing to factors beyond fat and cholesterol. Some scientists posit that meat processing chemicals might create carcinogenic compounds within our bodies. Sodium nitrate present in spam is a prime suspect, but clear connections remain elusive, leading the FDA to deem it currently safe. Spam's legendary shelf life has led to a mix of admiration and skepticism. With an indefinite shelf life, provided the seal remains intact, Hormel recommends its inclusion in emergency kits alongside other durable products like Dinty Moore Stew and Hormel Chili. Despite this indefinite shelf life claim, the taste quality might decrease after three years. Practical advice from Eat By Date suggests that after about five years past its expiration, spam might not be as palatable. So, to keep your apocalypse stash at its best, a refresh every half decade might be in order. This storied product was launched on July 5th, 1937, and it quickly became synonymous with the World War II era. It's astounding to think of the 15 million cans shipped weekly to feed the Allied army. By war's end, approximately 100 million cans had been dispatched to troops. Given its rapid wartime consumption, it's not too surprising that by 1959, the one billionth can was produced. By 2017, sales had skyrocketed to over 8 billion cans, making spam a mainstay in about a third of American homes. But Guam's love affair with spam is a level onto its own. With a consumption rate of 16 cans per resident annually, it outpaces many other regions. The island's McDonald's outlets alone uses about 57,600 cans annually. This fondness for spam can be traced back to World War II when the island was under Japanese occupation. To the starving locals, the arrival of the Allies bearing spam was not just about liberation, but also survival. The resilient residents who had resorted to eating scraps saw spam as more than just food. It was hope. Today, it stands as a testament to their endurance and the spirit of recovery. Spam's enduring success in today's health-conscious age is a testament to Hormel's brilliance in branding, adaptability, and market understanding. Despite the global shift toward organic and plant-based eating, Spam remains popular due to several reasons. It's affordable and accessible, catering to a broad demographic that values cost and convenience. Hormel has struck a balance between maintaining Spam's original taste to keep local customers while innovating with new flavors to cater to diverse tastes. The product's versatility in a range of dishes has kept it relevant in kitchens worldwide. 
Nostalgia plays a role in spam's appeal, evoking simpler times for older generations, while younger consumers see it as a cool vintage product. Recognizing its immense popularity in regions like Asia-Pacific, Hormel has ensured that spam is deeply rooted in various local cultures. Their preparedness evident in ensuring ample stock during crises like the pandemic has built trust and loyalty among consumers. Spam's history, from its role in World War II to its iconic packaging, provides a rich narrative that Hormel has used to its advantage. Authentic storytelling, combined with understanding audience needs and market adaptability, ensures that Spam remains a household name. In essence, Hormel's handling of Spam is a lesson in branding prowess and offers a valuable insight for businesses in any domain. So, are you willing to give Spam a go after learning how it's made in today's video? Let us know in the comments! But that's all for today! See ya!